explains why he is lighter uh, than the calligraph that we used to know. But when I reached him on phone, uh, that is yesterday, he said uh, that the makeup that he was uh, done, of, done on at uh, the t television studios is the one which made him actually look way lighter than he actually is, and also the lighting. A eh, calligraph. Papa Jones, what in the happen? All right, uh, let's move to uh, to another story. That is um, a water vendor in Mawanga Estate in Nakuru County was found in the act with the police officer's wife, and this police officer is stationed in Mombasa, and uh, uh, the wife is uh, staying in Nakuru and operates a kiosk in Nakuru. And uh, when uh, she was cornered by the husband, she said that you know what, you've been so much cruel to me. I find a lot of love, a lot of uh, uh, solace and a lot of uh, approval in this man. The water, uh, the water vendor's name is uh, Moridi. Uh, we'll only identify them by one name. And the police officer is Makori, while the woman is uh, Masi. And this is how it happened. The man had been tipped off by uh, the neighbors that his wife was playing the field. And so on this material day, he arranged three of his guys one went right straight to the back door and he banged on the door that is the police officer Macquarie banged on the door and uh, when the wife realized something was really not uh, right he, she decided to sneak the guy out through the back door but sadly there was a man waiting for the guy on the back door and he was cornered and interestingly when Murid was asked what he was doing with the married woman he said that he operates uh, uh, in, in the CBD just the same way the woman does and their shops are uh, adjacent to each other. And why are you at a married woman's house at 3 a.m.? He said he's, he's going to pick his money, 5,000 shillings, 3 a.m. kwa nyumba ya mtu. Unaenda kuchukua pesa. Lillian, what do you think of that? 3 a.m. kuchukua pesa kwa nyumba ya mtu. You know what, Brian, I don't know. I, I will, yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, when I met Fadali, my baby is out of bounds, Kabisa. Cancelled by the date that a uh, lady decides to walk down the aisle, Tafadali Musi. And there, uh, our baby is our On to another story which is a bit interesting. Um, Sarehe MP aspirant, Steve Bogo, is known for his flashy lifestyle. Now claims that the most expensive suit in his wardrobe, wait for it, is. 800,000 Kenyan shillings. 800,000 Kenyan shillings. The most expensive uh, uh, suit in Donald Trump's wardrobe, according to GQ magazine, is 6,000 US dollars. That's around 600,000 shillings. So Steve Bogo is way 200,000 richer in terms of the suit than Donald Trump. <laughs> Let's listen in to what he said. What's the most expensive suit in the, in the wardrobe? Uh, the most expensive I have Canali, mm -hmm. I have Massimo Duty, I have Massimo Bossi, mm -hmm. uh, which goes about eight thousand dollars. That's uh, my quick calculation tells me eight hundred thousand shillings. Yes, that was a gift I bought for myself. So you're wearing a whole count. Yeah, it is. It is what it is. What makes me feel confident. If I dress that suit and go for a meeting, believe mm -hmm. you me, I'm gonna strike that deal. If I stand in front of you with that suit, I'm more confident to challenge any question you ask me. If it's mm -hmm. um, you know, very uh, cheeky people in the gallery, <laughs> someone just asked me to go to my hand. I'm going to be a little in shades, right? Like Massimo Dutti is mm. a very expensive designer. I yes. mean, they've got a range of the most expensive fashionable suits, so I defend him on that one. <laughs> All right, 800,000 Kenyan shillings. That's a whole car. Mm. <laughs> Steve Bogo. So let's move on to another story. And this is a case of your captain sleeping. And a senior pilot put the lives of 300 passengers on board at risk when he left an intern at the control of the plane. The plane was leaving Pakistan for London and he decided he'll just go back into the business class and dip in and sleep for two and a half hours. And w one of the passengers who was on the plane decided to uh, raise the complaint with a senior air hostess and what the uh, air hostess did was let him sleep that is what she said let him sleep and uh, the, the passenger seemingly angered decided you know what I won't let this, I won't let this pass by 
and uh, he took photos and as you can see by those uh, particular photos that is the pilot sleeping and it will be remembered in the year 2009 Air France uh, that is flight 447 killed 228 people after a 58 year old pilot and his senior officer decided to sleep and the plane was uh, leaving the Rio de Janeiro in Brazil for uh, Paris, France so such are the kind of risks that we expose ourselves to when actually we're sleeping on duty especially if you are uh, taking care of several lives you are a driver you are a pilot you are a captain no that shouldn't really happen all right and on to my final story this is a case of a british man who had last year tried to kill donald trump all right this is what happened the british man by the name uh, sandford Michael Sanford, that is, uh, reached out to a police officer who was manning uh, a rally uh, that Donald Trump was attending at the Las Vegas. And he reached out to a police officer and attempted to grab the police officer's gun. But as that was happening, he, he was uh, actually dragged to the ground because he couldn't manage to uh, pick that particular gun by himself. He was dragged to the ground by the security officers and he was later arraigned in court. And what happened, he was sentenced to one year in jail uh, beginning December 13, 2016. And he has since been released. But his reason for wanting to kill Donald Trump, wait for it, he says, Ah, voices just told me to kill him. Voices. And when the judge actually uh, ordered for evaluation of his mental uh, capacity, it emerged that he had a history of mental illnesses. And so he was release and he is currently back home with his family at uh, the door king in surrey and the mother is known as lynn it takes really a lot of courage to go out to a rally and try to even sh attempt to even think around killing a very prominent person as the then the uh, republican candidate donald trump all that is all we have from the news trends uh, this, uh, let's do this again, but until then, do have a fulfilling day ahead, and remember to do everything that you do very responsibly. God bless you. Back to you, Lillian. <laughs> Thanks for that, Brian. It's always a, such a treat. Um, we continue with Citizen Extra, this time with Salim Swade, who... Salim, sutia kopesanga kijamani. Yes, nilikota kukuliza wewe gauni, gauni ambalo unalipenda sana kwenye... Joe yako ni begani. Yeah, si pesa mingi. Mi huwa mchana simple kabisa. Bra 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 una 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 koti lako fulani hapo ukiliuza unatulipa mshahara miezi miwili mitatu. Wallahi. <laughs> Lile nilisema inaitwaje vile nikaringa nikitoka hapa. Mazimo, mazimo duty. Bas, mazimo duty. Mimi nakwenda kuitafuta. Eh. Mpenzi mtazamaji bila shaka tutakuwa nawe katika muda wa takriban saa zima kwa ajili ya kukuletea mengi zaidi katika Citizen Extra awamu ya Kiswahili. Mimi ni Salim Swale nitakuwa na hodha wako hadi muda huo na kusihi tuwe sote wakati huo. Usiende bali.